Happy Halloween, girls! Um, and today we have a special Halloween episode for you. Um, so thank you for joining your ghoul guides. Um, I'm Mary, this is Lauren, and today we will be talking you through some um, Halloween facts um, or fictions. Because you think you know a holiday, but how well do you really know it? <laughs> I'm so excited. Halloween is the best day of the year. Halloween. Apart from the day after Valentine's Day when all the chocolate is reduced. Yeah, yeah. The whole, the whole of October is a really great month because there's all the things that I like in the shops. Um, and I can buy skull stuff. Um, skull stuff. There's um, pumpkins but, everywhere. Um, and, and though it is sad when Halloween is over, I also like that there is all the reduced chocolate. Um, yes. And reduced Halloween decorations that I use as yeah. normal decorations. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Well, as you can, as, as you can probably tell, uh, myself and Lauren are super into this spooky seasonal time of year. And we have even dressed up for the occasion um, because we don't always look this spooky. Uh, just uh, FYI. <laughs> um, it's hard to be spooky in a pandemic, but God damn, do we try. We, we are here to give you as much spooky content as we can. Um, so um, I, guess, I guess without n any more ado, um, let's get Halloweening. <laughs> Hit me with those facts. Wait, or fictions. Okay. Fact and or fiction. Fact or fiction. Okay, okay. So one common misconception about Halloween is that Halloween is satanic. Ghosts, ghouls, demons, Satan. It's satanic, right? You know, skulls, rituals, you're carving things into pumpkins, all of this kind of, you know, macabre, gothic um, aesthetic. It's satanic, right? 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 Yeah? No. No. <laughs> no. So, uh, fiction number one, Halloween has nothing to do with Satanism. Um, so just in general, any of the kind of satanic movements, um, whether that be the actual kind of spiritual Satanism, um, the Bayan Satanism, or kind of more uh, atheistic um, satanic movements um, that we've seen in the 20th and 21st century, such as the Church of Satan or the Satanic Temple, they like Halloween, just like you and I like it, but it's not, it's not like a kind of inherent part of, of the satanic tradition. Um, <laughs> so yeah, no, Halloween is, so, Halloween is not, um, not, not satanic. <laughs> Yeah, so why, so you know, why do people think that Halloween is satanic? Because it kind of doesn't have the hallmarks necessarily. Like I know, yes, it's supernatural. It's about death and the beyond, hauntings. But that's not, there's a pretty big gap on that pie chart between supernatural and Satanism. Yes, yeah, there is. Absolutely. And I guess this kind of brings us to um, the fact or fiction number two, um, which is, um, does Halloween have roots in Christianity? Um, and also this kind of feeds into a lot of what you were discussing um, in your um, ghost hunting um, video, where we were looking at, you know, the, the kind of um, the, the church or kind of religious accusations that um, certain materials and, and ghost hunting methods were rooted in, in Satanism. And I think you get that, I think you get that with Halloween as well. Um, so there are Christian traditions, um, specifically around this time of year. Um, you have All Hallows Eve and All Saints Day. All Hallows so Eve. So today is All Hallows Eve, tomorrow is All Saints Day. Yes, yes. So All Hallows, Hallows Eve shares the same date as Halloween. Um, and like Halloween, All Hallows' Eve is a time where um, the world is a bit more liminal, um, and we we kind of we remember we remember the dead, we remember the spirits. Um, so it's a kind of very liminal and spiritual time. Um, and then the day that follows is All Saints' Day, where Christians remember um, the saints. Um, so I guess I guess one of the one of the kind of um, foundations of, of the myth that Halloween is satanic. It's a way for Christ, Christian traditions and, and Christianity um, to differentiate itself. You know, we have our 
um, spiritual um, traditions of the dead and then nothing like Halloween because Halloween is satanic. Um, so A, it's a construct to, to create a difference between the good Christianity and the bad satanic um, <laughs> that's italic mm -hmm. Halloween. Um, but I think as well, you, you can't overlook the fact that, you know, why does, why does Christianity have this, um, all, all saints day in October? Um, why does it mm -hmm. share this with, with, um, with Halloween, which, you know, I guess it's just a really spooky kind of year. Um, all saints day is not Halloween. So I guess that's kind of no Halloween doesn't have roots in Christianity. Um, but it's also, you know, kind of true as well because they're kind of similar. So it's, you know, a bit of... So are we looking at a classic case of Christian appropriation? I guess, yeah. Um, because, um, now, I'm sure you are aware of this as well, but there are many, many European um, kind of folk traditions around this time of year out of which Halloween um, came from. Um, so some of them are the kind of Celtic or, or Gaelic traditions, um, such as Samhain. Um, so yeah. Good so, old Samhain. Good old Samhain. Um, so for those of you who don't know, um, this is a festival um, that marks the end of harvest and the beginning of the darker time of year. Um, and it's kind of, um, so it's basically a time that's halfway between the autumn and the winter equinox. It's just when things are starting to get really, really dark, really, really spooky. And, and thus, you know, that kind of liminal, um, mm -hmm. uh, lim liminal space where spirits um, are said to wander. Um, so some and literally a time, like, I suppose, you know, you said like it's the end of the harvest. So it's literally a day where you celebrate the end of, the growth and the living and the beginning of like the you know the winter the dead season like it's very closely tied to the land and to the season exactly exactly um and and just as um around the winter equinox in december um there there would be a lot of kind of celtic and gaelic festivals around that kind of the winter solstice the winter um mm -hmm. that kind of thing where you would have you know, a feast day, um, which which was appropriated um, by Christians um, who wanted to uh, take something that a lot of people were celebrating and turn it into something Christian mm -hmm. um, that they could then spread Christianity. It's easier to, you know, evangelize a population when you put your holidays on their holidays. <laughs> like, they're like, well, I want to keep celebrating. And you're like, cool. We'll just put Jesus on this day. <laughs> Which, and that's basically what happened. <laughs> yeah. And and I'm sure that we will at some point do a video about um Christmas um and Gothic Yoda. appropriation. Um mm -hmm. but this 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 festival, um, Sawin is is like you say, it's is tied to the end of the festival, the 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 kind of the end of the the harvest and um and 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 those those sorts of things. Um and there were specific things that were part of this festival, such as costumes, um, and people mm -hmm. would go around um, door to door asking for food. Um, and often, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, singing or, or giving some verses, and maybe they would have painted their faces, that sort of thing. Um, and it's also a time, like we say, it's a spooky time. Um, and part of Sawin is the idea that spirits were also wandering um and they were also going door to door um but specifically to their to their families homes for that kind of hospitality um so this is where the concept of of trick or treating comes from so to go back to the whole does halloween have roots in christianity kind of but no because it's uh so so we um i love it yeah yeah so what you're telling me then is halloween is actually super old and so old so these old. traditions of you know the idea it's a night that the dead walk of dressing up of of kind of humans pretending to be part of the undead is actually really really old it's very old it's very spooky and it's very <laughs> gothic <laughs> 
Um, and just, just as an aside, um, for those of you who are thinking, Suween, 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 what is that? It's spelled like it should be pronounced Sam Hain. And yeah. for those of you who have watched the Supernatural Halloween episode about Sam Hain, they kind of get some stuff right, um, but not the pronunciation. Um, but the whole <laughs> idea that it is a, a kind of European um, Celtic Gaelic festival and people would paint their faces and go around in costumes. Yes, that is exactly what um, the festival of Sawin, um, not Samhain, Sawin would be. Um, okay, which brings me to another fact or fiction myth about Halloween is that it's entirely a, an American tradition. Um, and I guess we've kind of covered that because no, it's not. Um, it's not, it has roots um, in, in Europe and specifically in Ireland and Britain. Um, but obviously um, America, um, as it has been constructed as the United States of America, um, owes a lot to immigration. Um, and yeah. these traditions, um, these traditions were kind of immigrate, you know, they, they, they came with the immigrants. Um, mm -hmm. um, I think this is something that people miss a lot. Like, you know, England's not super kind in most of their history to Ireland, Wales, or Scotland. And, you know, particularly in the 18th century, lots of people, particularly from Ireland and Scotland, decide to emigrate to the US. And this is why St. Patrick's Day is such a big thing, because you have a huge, you know, England is in the middle of essentially destroying Ireland. <laughs> um, so a lot of people choose to move to America and they take those traditions with them. So I feel like that's why Halloween is such an important festival in the US because it's one that for a young nation is connected to a legacy and a lineage. Of course it has become commercialized, but there's very little of what we think of as Halloween today that wasn't there hundreds of years ago. Absolutely, absolutely. And if, if you if you strip back Halloween and the idea of trick-or-treating to its kind of bare like foundations, it is, you know, it, it, it's the tradition of sewing. Um, mm -hmm. But what you get in, in America is, is that kind of, that tie back to that kind of heritage and that, that um, kind of immigrant heritage, yeah. to this older past. But then America does what it does best and it, it, it capitalizes it. Um, it Disneyfies it. It Disneyfies <laughs> it, um, and it turns it into a capitalist haven. Um, yes, but you know, <laughs> I think I think that's part of the reason why, especially in in Europe, we see Halloween and trick or treating as an American phenomenon, um, which mm -hmm. it, it both is and it isn't. Um, so yeah, I guess it's fact and fiction kind um, of like again, yeah. Yeah, I agree because I suppose, you know, at its heart, what becomes Halloween is supposed to be, you know, similar to the Mexican tradition of Dia de los Muertos. Like, it's supposed to be a festival where you celebrate the turning of a season, you acknowledge the dead, you show respect to the dead, because the whole thing is about trick or treating is if you didn't give the dead spirit calling food, then it would wreak havoc upon you. You're supposed to respect the dead, you know, respect the the tradition respect the passing of life but a lot of that has been lost but i feel like a lot of that comes from the christianization as well because by making it all hallows eve it kind of muddies and and hides that original meaning so again it's quite interesting to see how these like appropriations and emigrations have changed the holiday that we, you know, people don't question why you dress up and go trick or treating on, Hall on Halloween. Um, you just do it, I guess, for a lot of people, which is really interesting that it's still so popular, even though, you know, with Christmas, people are still kind of like, oh, yeah, some people think this. 
it's now just a really fun time of year, which it doesn't have to be anything more than a really fun time of year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, not one to knock, uh, you know, dressing up for uh, spooky things. <laughs> um okay okay <laughs> um, so this brings me to my last fact or fiction about halloween and that is that it's all about the pumpkins um so when you think halloween you think trick-or-treating but you also think pumpkin carving um 100 percent. yeah 100 percent. um but again it's not quite as simple as this um and if we go back to Mary, the kind of- are you about to tell me the pumpkin don't ruin the pumpkin for me. <laughs> I love the pumpkin. <laughs> Don't worry, the pumpkin is here, here to stay. We're not getting rid of the pumpkin. We're simply adding <laughs> more vegetables, I guess. Um, okay, so okay. If, we, um, if we go back to the kind of the origins of the carved vegetable, the carved mm-hmm. pumpkin, um, we find a popular folktale about Stingy Jack. Um, that is a great nickname yes Um, and if you're thinking hmm Jack that name sounds kind of familiar yeah yeah we'll get to that we'll get to that Um, but basically Jack made a deal with the devil um, and he yeah. Really ill-advised. <laughs> yeah, and, and uh, um, just a uh, warning, um, or I guess a piece of advice, do not make deals with the devils. Um, just, you know, throwing that Especially not there. on crossroads. <laughs> exactly. Um, anyway, so Jack makes this deal, and it's that he won't, his soul, when he dies, won't go to hell. Um, he's like, cool, I'm not going to hell anymore. I made this deal with the devil. Great. He dies. And he gets up to heaven and God's like, hmm, you know, I heard about that deal you made. I heard about that deal you made and I don't like it. So he chucks him out of heaven. (laughs) Um, And basically Jack now has to wander with his soul, um, lighting, lighting, um, lighting the way. Um, And he's just compelled to, to, to wander. Um, And this, ties back to traditions of um the kind of um the lights um and and the carved vegetables and often you know in europe not always a lot of pumpkins um so originally yeah traditionally yeah. not a european no um, not uh, european vegetable so often no, it would be native. um vegetables like turnips um and other kinds of things like that um so jack the turnip um <laughs> i guess so Rather than Jack the Pumpkin King, it would be Jack the Turnip King. Yeah. Or Jack the Neep King. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Which, which kind of looks a bit different. Um, and, and to be honest, still kind of gross. Um, and it doesn't have the same aesthetic effect. It doesn't have the same aesthetic. Um, but no. as we have been discussing, these folk tales immigrated with the people that, that immigrated to America. Um, and specifically Irish immigrants got to America and, you know, got got round to halloween time still, of year still need to light the way for stingy jack need to light the way for stingy jack but there's no turnips there's no turnips but there are a lot of pumpkins so that's where pumpkins come from um so that's why it's a pumpkin. It, um, all about all about stingy jack um so i guess fiction no it's not all about pumpkins again pumpkin. um but we do recommend pumpkins Pumpkin's it's great to carve in pies um, and cakes. Biscuits, I will say, and- biscuits are good. I will say turnips, less gross on the inside. Mm-hmm. It would be less gross to carve a turnip than it would be to, gro- to carve a pumpkin. But then I kind of feel like cu- the gross innards of the pumpkins part of the, f- the fun, the spooky fun. Do you kind of ick me out though? They're, they're, they're gross in a fun kind of way. Um, <laughs> that- but anyway, this That's what year, they say about me, gross in a fun kind of way. <laughs> but this, anyway, this year, this year for Halloween, why not, as well as, or perhaps maybe instead of <laughs> carving a pumpkin, why not carve a turnip for Stingy turnip. Jack? I think that's actually really good advice, Mary, because um, especially at the minute here in the UK, we're about to go back in to what is essentially lockdown. So the Halloween yeah. fun is restricted to our homes. <laughs> So why not carve a turnip? 
why not? They why not? are an often neglected vegetable. Very neglected vegetable, but they are delicious. Um, and, oh, yeah. you know, with all of this time that, that we are finding ourselves <laughs> with, um, why not? Why not carve why not? other vegetables? Um, so let us know. Let us know in the comments um, if you have ever carved a turnip. <laughs> Um, or if you have perhaps maybe carved another vegetable, maybe a um, carrot, carrots. I, can a you carve carrots? I, I guess. Sure. I um, mean, you can make them into little roses. Yeah. Yeah. Tweet us your pictures, um, <laughs> at the ghoul guides, um, on Twitter. Um, and yeah, I guess we look forward to seeing your carved turnip pictures. Um, Oh. And this has been our this has been our special episode, <laughs> all about Halloween. Um, we hope you have <laughs> learned something. Um, and um, as always, um, until next time, say stay safe and stay spooky. Oh my hat! <laughs> Happy Halloween, y'all.